Welcome to Small Arms Firearms, where Honest Outlaw and I remake the movie Twins, but I don't get to be Arnold. Today on the channel, we are going to be dipping into the training side of competitive shooting. We're going to be looking at some processes you can do, and the major part of this is the review of the ACE XR VR training system. First, I'm just going to kind of go over this one. This is the controller that was released initially with the alpha testing package. If you signed up and became a member, uh, it's obviously a 2011 grip style. Um, that had more moving parts to it. An actual mag release that dropped a mag out, whereas on this one it's just a button. It doesn't really do anything. Um, a slide release lever on the side for, obviously, a slide release. They also had this thing on the top that could manipulate the slide as well. I have a full video on the channel already from some time ago that kind of goes over this whole controller. Um, and the trigger and the safety and everything. And I think after a while, Ace kind of took the feedback from the customers and, and saw that this is a little complicated for the game and how it functions. And it kind of took away from some of the interactive fun you could have with it, where hitting it too hard sometimes would cause a mag to drop or the slide wouldn't go forward. So it could be frustrating at times, but it, overall it works fairly well. Um, and now, with the final product release, they've gone with more of the striker fired P320 shape and feel to it. This one actually has more weight to it as well. When you hold it, it feels like it's an actual 320 with a loaded mag. It feels like they, they got the weight correct on this. Um, and the trigger on this one, it just feels better. Um, it does kind of have that mix of not necessarily a striker trigger because it's really crisp, um, but I've had striker triggers feel like this. It, it, just, it just works. Um, as far as holsters for these, if you want to go into that route, I went on Amazon and just found like a really cheap paddle holster. I can't find it anymore, but anything that I found that works onto the rails for the mount, or if you have a race holster um, for like limited optics or open that will latch onto the trigger guard, those holsters will work just fine for that if you want to do actual holster draws inside the game. I'm going to run some footage from inside the game here and there. Um, it's tricky getting it to record in-game sounds and the microphone sometimes, so the sound actually from the in-game isn't on there. But I assure you, it sounds like a gun going off in-game. Obviously, it's not going to blow your ears out. Um, you actually hear the brass hit the ground or when you hit a uh, like a piece of paper it sounds different than steel um, they have an awesome little drone game where drones are flying in with a circle steel target and in order for you to find those drones it makes like an echo location kind of beep so you're in a 360 view and you're shooting at these drones as they're flying in it's kind of a competition game high scoreboard like how long can you last because the first drone to hit you or your character in the game your timer ends the, that game is done and they have a scoreboard for that um, the scoreboard system, and it's really cool, um, being able to compare yourself to other players that are currently in the game. And even at SHOT Show this year, I think they had J.J. Ricaza doing a specific SHOT Show 2024 course to where when you complete the course, you can compare yourself and your hit factor to some of the top-level competitive shooter shooters. Now, how does this make sense? Why would you get this? I want every edge I can get in competitive shooting. I don't get a lot of time to practice and run drills. I can only go to the range every now and then. I've got two small kids and a family and a full-time job, so getting out to the range can be tough when I live almost an hour away from any range. So in the basement time practicing against these guys is uh, some of my best um, drills that I can do with a laser trainer. And not to go completely off topic while we were talking about the Ace XR, I do utilize laser trainers like this which is a nine millimeter um, like laser bullet with a rubber backstop. So when the firing pin hits the back of it, it, shoots out that red laser. 
when that red laser goes out, you can hit a target, you can at least see what you're doing and you can really develop some good trigger control and mechanics where if you see that laser streaking across your target, you know that you're jerking. You're pulling the trigger and the gun pretty hard and your grip's not strong enough or you need to adjust your grip and how you're holding the pistol. That's huge in getting your trigger mechanics down. And then there's also apps on your phone that you can hook up to look at the targets and, and it can really, really help with your speed and delivery of just that trigger pull. I also have the Blackbeard Mantis set up for when I'm training with an AR. If we're doing any two gun match stuff. Um, I wanna preface this with, again, I don't have damn near enough subscribers or views to, for any of these companies to send me this stuff. This is, these were all bought with my own money. Everything was. And it's all my testing, it's non-biased. I'm just gonna give you guys the truth for if you're gonna spend your money on something like this. Uh, the pros of using the VR setup, I can see as being transitions. When you're looking at a stage, because they have a lot of pre-built USPSA classifiers in there. So you can run these classifiers all day long and you can get those transitions and you can figure out your stage plan and how you wanna execute that stage or that classifier or any of the other stages they have. It really does help develop that transition of moving over and how you're going to run maybe because inside the game, if you have a big enough space to play it, like a garage or even your backyard, um, when you move, you move inside the game with your feet. So if you have that room to be able to utilize that, fantastic. You can practice moving around barriers and moving through a stage. I mean, another pro of this is it's a game, it's fun. I, it's it's fun to not do dry fire training maybe and be able to strap that on and, and go at it and compete against other people that are playing it and see if you can get up to a platinum or even higher score in the percentage wise. They show all the hit factors, it has a timer on it, it has like a holster system built in to where if you don't even have a holster for it, you can utilize the button on the controller to push. So you bring the gun down and you push the button and bring it up. So it's not physically inside a holster on your body, but the gun will be holstered. So that's one way to practice like drawing without actually having a holster on your body. And last but not least, one of the biggest aspects I think of this are the developers. Um, when I signed up for the alpha testing program and they sent the stuff out, I had to pay for it still. Um, they are on top of it. They were sending emails out every week asking us what they can do better. We were filling out surveys every week and they even went as far as they would schedule Zoom meetings with us and the owners of the companies and the lead developers would be chatting with us on a video call figuring out what we liked about it, what we didn't like, and they hurt us. There were a lot of changes that they made early on that made the game so much more realistic and it made it more fun too. They added little like thrill games into it with a zombie wave attack on you and like a... Um... Today, Junior! And I don't even remember what it's called. Like it's, and a pop goes the weasel kind of thing, whatever, like, oh! Oh, and they added like a whack-a-mole thing. So you're shooting as they pop up and it's just competition for fun. It's, it's a nice break sometimes from just shooting the same paper and steel targets over and over and over and over again. Now, what are the downsides? Uh, let's just address the elephant in the room, the price. You have to have one of these. This is a Quest 2. Um, I had already had this. I, I'm still a nerd and I love video games here and there and my kids love it family comes over and everybody has a great time playing with it. Um, so I bought this a while ago. Currently the Quest 2, because now they have the Quest 3 out, the Quest 2 is $250 for the bare bones stock model. It'll get you going. I would never recommend someone buy that without getting the upgraded strap with the external battery pack in it. This over doubles your amount of time you have to where you don't have to be tethered. And it's always nice. So I would never recommend getting the base model version. I would always recommend getting the, uh, it's like a leet strap or something with the battery. Uh, this basically over doubles the amount of playtime you have before you have to plug in and you'd be tethered to the wall. You don't really wanna do that too much if you're trying to move around. The elite strap and the base model brings you to like right at $340. Now, Ace has decided to go with an annual subscription program. I don't, I mean, I get it, I don't like it, and I'm sure other people don't, but the amount of work and time that these guys keep putting in this and they're updating the game every week, 
I'm getting emails from them constantly about new stages they're adding, new challenges. They're having meetups through Discord on certain nights to do big multiplayer events where everybody's doing challenges together. I haven't had a chance to make one of those, so I'm not really sure how it runs, but they're working their tail off to make this the best product they can. It is $228 with, for, for one year of use and access to it. Uh, if you are a first responder or military, you get a 20% discount. It's a pretty decent discount. If you add all of that together, getting the Quest 2 brand new, um, getting your annual subscription without the discount, you're at $568. Right Damn. out of that. That's a lot of money to get involved into a training program that I still don't think is necessarily better than dry fire if you're doing dry fire correctly. When I say correctly, it's, it helps to have a double action pistol. I use my Shadow 2 because it's double action and pairing that with the laser bullet, I get an actual projectile of a laser going out to the target. Yes, it's like a seven to eight pound pole, so it's not very accurate as my continued shots because it's single action after the first shot, but pairing that with an app called Laser Hit. Again, not sponsored. No one gave me anything, I paid for it all. Laser Hit app on my iPhone is like, I think it was 15 bucks, $10, $15 at most, to buy the whole app. No subscription, nothing, you buy it once you're done. And you set your phone up on a tripod or something, you just point the camera at the targets that are available on their website to print for free, and you can do just bullseye training, just trigger control. They have a, a timer version of that where the phone sits up there and you put in a time range from say like two seconds to eight seconds. You can narrow it and widen it however much you want, and you sit there at make ready, and then when the timer goes off, you draw and shoot. When the laser hits the target, your phone picks it up. It tells you your time from when the timer went off to when you hit it, and it scores your points too on a bullseye system. It's, fan it's phenomenal for training for anything from EDC to competitive shooting. It it's great, and I improved my shooting phenomenally after using that for just a month. And this was years ago that I got all of this and set up. And you even can get HDMI cords to plug it into your TV on a big screen. That has been single-handedly one of the best systems I've got. The laser bullet I have, I didn't even buy from their website. They say that their laser products are superior to others and others are more blurry and sometimes the camera won't pick it up from your phone. I haven't found that to be the case. I bought like, like 40, probably $50 off of Amazon and it takes tiny little batteries you can get as well. Um, it's worked great for me and I've never had any issues. I use my own tripod and everything, super cheap. Roughly about, I would say $100 at most, you're set up with that dry fire laser training. The Blackbeard Mantis, on the other hand, that one was pretty pricey. I can't remember how much that was. I think another slight downside, nothing, just kind of being nitpicky here, is there's not a lot of people that have adopted buying virtual reality headsets and then using it for a sport like competitive shooting. I, I couldn't tell you how many competitive shooters I met that any of them have ever had a VR headset. So it would be a big purchase to get into this versus the dry fire laser training that I've done for less than $100. And you're looking at 500, over 500 to get started. There's also not as many people in the game that you're competing against. So I don't know if the people that I'm competing against are A level, C level, masters, gram, I don't know. It does, there's no way to really put that in your profile. So that would be an awesome connection if it could go to USPSA's portal or practice scores portal to where we could actually see maybe scores that these people are having in real life inside the game so you know who you're competing against. Overall, it's fun and it's super innovative. I can't justify it for the price at the moment yet. I still feel that doing dry fire drills, shooting cardboard targets like this or printed out targets from laser hit does better for my shooting than utilizing the VR headset. It's fun, it's competitive, and they're churning out updates so often that I'm tempted to just go in there just to check them out here and there. I get in the game for 20 minutes and I'm kind of done. I wish I could say that this is where the future is, but at this point, I, I don't know. I, I still need that feedback of my own personal pistol that I'm gonna be using out in a match. I, I want that 
that feel of that, that accurate weight, the mag release, the mag changes are very important in handling the firearm when you're trying to get quick times. But if you have the money to spend and you want to have fun and you're going to get a gaming headset that is a blast to use with friends and family or just by yourself, it's a, it's a great experience. But for the competitive shooter that is looking to manage their money and, and not blow it, I would just stay away from that and go with dry fire training. And a laser hit target system is going to do you wonders compared to this. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. I'm always happy to respond. Coming up soon, as soon as some new equipment gets here, we're going to be doing a review on hearing protection devices. All the way from foam in-ear, all the way up to some of the most expensive custom molded in-ear digital hearing protection. I'm excited to get the chance to test that, to let you guys know what I think, and it costs a lot of money, so you better like it. Digital in here, in. What is that? Weird.